Okay. Um, for those that's never read the expatriation or citizenship of the United States, expatriation, I suggest that you do so because it reveals within there that there was and is a Moorish empire. This is what it says. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand from the above knowledge instructions, that is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon such line. I will therefore confine the remarks to general conditions existing, which may possibly be of some use in the connection with the information desired. One, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same as in other countries, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection or consider it um, ipso jury, um, jury as Moorish subjects. Two and three. Moorish subjects lost their nationality. What did it say? What does it say? Moorish subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country having treaties, relations with the Moorish Empire. It was established by the Convention of Madrid, conclude July 3rd, 1880, as follows. Article 15. Any subject of Morocco who has been naturalized in a foreign country and who shall return to Morocco shall, after having remained for a length of time equal to that which shall have been regularly necessary for him to obtain such naturalization, choose between entire submission to the laws of the empire and the obligation to quit Morocco unless it shall be proven that the naturalization in a foreign country was obtained with the consent of the government of Morocco. Foreign naturalization heretofore acquired by subjects of Morocco according to the rules established by the laws of each country shall be continued to be them as regards all its effects without any restriction. The above ruling has never yet been acted upon and shall they at any time be contempted or yeah, contempt. Seriously, a large number of naturalized persons, Americans and others residing in Morocco would be affected Thereby, foreign far, residence in foreign parts does not affect the nationality of Moorish subjects, and the Moorish government has no means of protecting its government permanently residing in any country, with the exception of a so-called Moorish consul at Gibraltar and a Moorish agent at Cairo, Egypt. Now, reading this, you would think what? Where's the Moorish government? <laughs> right, where's the Moorish Empire? What was the Moorish Empire? Right. 
And if they have it within the United States, citizenship, why is it even mentioned in the United States citizenship or the citizenship of the United States as it's called, expatriation, et cetera? Why is it even mentioned? Anybody know? Repeat the question again, please. Why is the Moorish Empire mentioned in the citizenship of the United States expatriation, etc., on page 460? Oh, this is Morocco. Um, and mm-hmm. it also, the people that they're talking about are basically us. Exactly. They're concerned because they because they say a large number of naturalized people, American and others, residing in Morocco would be affected. So they're saying if we actually acted upon this, um, basically they would lose a whole bunch of people under their citizenship clause. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everybody heard that. Uh, Dr. Ali. Yes. So we, when we become naturalized, we lost the nationality? Yes. You expatri- expatriating from... Um, 14th, you know, being the 14th Amendment. This is interesting. Can I expatriate, uh, Dr. Ali? You are already an American because you are Mexican. So you already, yeah, and my, have, you already have a nationality in that sense, but your ethnicity is a Moor or Moreno. You, yeah, but uh, there is some. How can I tell you and explain you? Yes, but there is some contra, some paperwork they needs to be done. So me by. Right doing some kind of paperwork, documents, affidavits, so I can expatriate. Can I do that? Can we do that? Yes, but all you have to do is just put your information on the public record. Has your information already been put on the public record? Uh, no. I, you mean the, 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 the paperwork that I did with you? Yes. No, I'm sorry. I haven't done it. Okay, but so I feel- then, that, then that would be you expatriating in that ex- to that extent. Right. But I also, besides the, can I, with another form or documents, paperwork, can I, like, an expatriating from this? Can I do that? Like, just expatriating from them? Like in other documents and other paperwork? Um, you don't have to do anything else. Once your documents is put on the public record, you are essentially saying that you have expatriated and that you have your Moorish um, nationality once again in that regard or your American nationality in that regard and your Moorish okay. ethnicity. Let me say it like that. Even though I didn't ma- didn't mention anything like expatriation, like expatriate, you didn't say any about that. Yeah, yeah. You you don't have to say the word expatriate because when you put anything stating um, that you have another nation, 
you are saying that your nationality is thus different than in a United States citizen. So therefore right. you have expatriated in that regard. Okay. But it doesn't hurt also I know there might be like kinda of like a damn stupid question, but it no. doesn't hurt to expatriate like for example, uh, a lot of people are scared to oh I don't want to expatriate for the United States. They mean then they're gonna throw me out of the United States. No. What people they don't understand, they don't get it, and that we're going to expatriate for the United States Corporation back to the land. I'm going to expatriate out of the United States Corporation that right. back to repatriate back to the land. Right. Right. And back to the Moorish Empire. Because the Moorish Empire is America in which that spans North America, South America, Central America, and the adjoining islands called Americana, which is also known as the, the Caribbean islands. All of that is the Moorish Empire, along with other countries, which is mentioned, which as in Egypt, which actually this is upper and lower Egypt, which is North America and South America. Uh, Dr. Ali, have you heard about the Clinton? Actually, they expatriate. I don't know. They did say they heard something that they expatriate. Is why they couldn't. They don't have any jurisdiction over them because they expatriate from the United States Corporation back. Repatriate back to the land, and that's why they couldn't do anything to the Clintons. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, yes, I heard that before, and the same is supposed to be for you, too. So they mentioned the Moorish Empire. So by you joining the Moorish Empire, you automatically expatriate from citizenship of the United States. That's my understanding on this subject because it says that Moorish subjects lost their nationality. So if you declare your nationality as a Moor, you are expatriating automatically and you have rejoined the Moorish Empire. And if you notice down in 4 and 5, it don't just say like in um, the preamble it says Moorish Empire. Then it comes down in 2 and 3, it says Moorish subjects lost their nationality having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. And then in 405, it goes from an empire to the Moorish government. Notice that. So, yeah, when we declare our nationality, it's like we repatriate back to the Moorish Empire. Right. Exactly. And, okay, and, yeah, and like you say, we don't really need to, once we do that, automatically we repatriate, we expatriate for them, we don't really need to do another paperwork like a, and, re and right. expatriate for the United States because by declaring nationality and repatriate back to the Moorish Empire, right? Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So when the courts state that they don't recognize, the United States don't recognize the Moorish Empire, then you read page 40, 460 of the Citizenship of the United States Expatriation, etc. page here. Since they claim that 
they, the United States don't recognize, the United States don't recognize the Moorish Empire, then why is the Moorish Empire and the Moorish subjects that lost their nationality and the Moorish government all mentioned within just simply five paragraphs? Well, seven paragraphs. Let's look at it that way. I'll add in the two, um, Article 15 as well. So seven paragraphs. So within these seven paragraphs, we see the Moorish Empire, Moorish Empire, Moorish subjects that lost their nationality, which they don't never tell you about, as well as also Morocco, American, the Moorish Consul, the Moorish Government. All of this is mentioned within these seven paragraphs. But yet, the United States don't acknowledge the Moorish Government? They don't recognize the Moorish Consul? They don't recognize the Moorish Empire? Interesting. But yet they have a whole chapter on the subject of the expatriation. Why? With Morocco. Well, Dr. Ali. If you, if you can remember, somebody pull out the Black's Law Dictionary 4th edition for me and read... Somebody please do that if you if you do have the fourth edition, please read the fourth um edition. Once again, deluxe, please pull it out and please read Well, before we get to Consula Court, we want to read the Consula Court since they mentioned Moorish Consul. It says, with the exception of a so-called Moorish consul at Gibraltar and a Moorish agent at Cairo, Egypt. Let's read the consul. Black's Law Dictionary, consul or consular court, or consular court, as they also refer to it as. And also, let's read amorality. Anybody have those two? Anybody pull out their Black's Law Dictionary as of yet? I have consular court. Okay, thank you. Uh, courts held by the consuls of one country within the territory of another under authority given by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they have also a criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect are subject to review by the courts of the home government. Um, and then there's something else that pulled up with consular court. Um, it's consular court is in um looks to, it looks like it's in here um a few different times under other under other things too. Right. I have admiralty. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> a court which has a very extensive jurisdiction of maritime causes, civil and criminal controversies arising out of acts done upon or relating to the sea and questions of prize. It is properly the successor of the consular courts, which were emphatically the courts of merchants and seagoing persons established in the principal maritime cities on the revival <clears throat> of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire to supply oh, the one. <laughs> wait, hold up, hold up. We can't pass that. After the fall of the Western Empire. So what empire did they just make mention of that was in the West? Oh, I know, the Moorish Empire. 
Now, if y'all don't get the connection, please read. Um, Demiante, do do you have the Black Story Dictionary Deluxe? Yeah, I got the fourth one. Fourth All one. right. So please now read Consular or Consular Court. Uh, C O N S U L Consul. Consul. Oh, here we go. Consuls or consoles, not consoles. Mm, do you have consola or counselor? What? I don't see that one in here. C O N S U L A R court. No, it's just it's like skipping through the use consular. Constable. No, it's it's where is it? Oh here we go. Consular courts. Yeah, consul and then consular courts. Which one you want first? Consular court. Consular courts held by the consuls of one country within the territory of another <laughs> under authority given by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they have also a criminal jurisdiction, but in this regard, respect are subject to review by the courts of the home government. Okay, now that's exactly what was read by Kande. However, do you see anything in parentheses? Uh, yeah, it's the... Um, United States Code, um, Section 141. Okay. So we need to look up United States Code, Section 141. Let's look that up. Anybody have it? Is this the population and other census information? Is this it? Um, it might be. Um, read it for us. Um, this is 13 USC. Oh, no, I don't think this is it. Okay. Zero five US four eight. Oh, 22 section 141. Yeah, six, Title 22 is foreign relations and intercourse. Um, I'm on the, uh, what is this, Cornell Law School website, yeah. and it says, I forgot what ACT stands for, but August 1st, 1956, 
repeal sections 141 or 143, which I think that was one section 141. Oh, those um, are the sections we was looking for. Yeah, effective yeah. upon oh, I the. I got a screenshot of those. Effective upon the date which the president determined to be appropriate for the relinquishment of jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco, jurisdiction Whoa. of wait, the United. States. <laughs> so they just told you who was the last Western Empire that was mentioned in Admiralty. Now they mentioned in Kasul, and then they tell you to go to Title One Forty One. You get this, mm -hmm. and as soon as you read within the first paragraph of Section One Forty um, United States Code One Forty One, mm -hmm. they tell you Morocco. Mm -hmm. So oh. this is why you have the United States of America or of Morocco. Right. And we didn't spell it Morocco like the way that they are having us to spell it today because that will correlate to what we now know as the Kingdom of Morocco, which is in Africa, which we had that country as well. We expanded our empire to that country as well, as well as to Mauritania, as well as to Libya, as well as to um, Egypt, and many other countries, Jordan, so forth and so on. All of this at one time was part of the Moroccan Empire or the Moorish Empire. But they have us thinking that it never expanded here to the West, but yet within their own definition, it tells you that it was the last Western Empire. And then tell you that Amorality was the successor to the Consular Court or the Consul. And then when you go to Consular Court, you find United States Code 141, Morocco. Now, everybody understands what just happened, the wordplay that they have done? Yes, old Stan is a Stan, my good brother. Crystal yes, clear. So that, 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 uh, that uh, nullifies what, uh, what some brothers say, say that this not the Moroccan em Empire. So, you know, yeah. we, have, we have proof. I mean, to me it does. Right? Proof. So... Get myself back up. <laughs> so here, he said that there was indeed a Moorish empire here, or at least discovered America first, and had intentionally, or had international, excuse me, treaties with the Indians since they ruled not just Spain, but the whole earth. The whole earth we ruled. And now, in order to trace it or to, excuse me, to deny our whole rulership of the planet Earth up until the 1880s or so, they had to state that it was the Tartarians. The, there was no Tartarians or Tartar, as in the Tartar source. These was the Moors. These were the Moors. Brother talking about they need proof showing the facts. Well, there's the facts. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. People just I don't, can't I don't know either. The lines. They, no. they don't have the ability to read between the lines. So yeah. therefore they can't quit. Yeah. So Oh, so that's the reason why why they're pushing that on um, the Tartarian narrative so much. Right. 
Right, right. Everything is Tartarian, but yet, no, it's Moorish. Uh, let's let's say that correctly, because you can get the book, um, the One World, um, written by um, Lee. I can't remember his other name, but he states in the book that it's Moorish. He specifically states that it's Moorish. So he's not trying to deny it as a European. He's trying to connect the dots just like we all are. But the one world of Tartarian is the name of the book, but it's really Moorish. Oh, the name of that book is One World Tartarian? I think it is. Um, I can pull it up and we can see, Brother Al. I believe okay. that's the name of it. One World but, um, One World Tartarian. Excuse me. A yeah, I have it here somewhere. I got to find it. Yeah, it's One World Tartarian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The One World Tartarian. The One World Tartarian. Okay. It says, if I can order that book. The greatest civilization ever to be erased from history. But it's not the Tartarians. It's the Moors. And this is written by James W. Lee. As I was saying, Lee. But here, this is what it says. This book could very well be the greatest revisionist history book ever written in modern times to date about the greatest lies about our common world history. The Tartari civilization encompassed most of the world we know today, from Russia to China to Africa to India to Australia and New Zealand to the North and South Americas. So once again, this Tartarian civilization that the Europeans are pushing is because of the Moors now realizing, hold up, this is was all Moorish. So they have to throw the word Tartarian in there in order to push that narrative. But this was Moors. So here it says, this is why he's writing of the one world Tartarians, but yet I already did the first world order back in 2009. We already knew this information. I state basically everything that he's stating in his book. I stated in my book, The First Water. <laughs> All right. Over 15 years ago. His book just came out three years ago. As you see, December the 15th, 2021, so really 2022. So just two years ago and some days, right? So here he's saying they have been swept from modern history books and were likely destroyed in the 19th, 20th centuries along with many of they're amazing buildings. There are numerous documents proving that there were also giants among them. The people of Tartari was destroyed by the same advanced technology that controlled our weather, were flooded, firebombed, earthquaked, and likely had directed energy weapons, D, E, W, or D, used against them, and many of their bones are buried under our cities today. But see, you can't destroy DNA. That's the problem. So they could have destroyed our ancestors. However, the DNA rises within each and every one of us, and this is why we are now coming back into knowledge of self, of who we are, and this information resonates with us to such an extreme state to such an extreme state that we now say, hold up, we are the Moorish Empire. By we saying that we are the Washington Moors 
and we saying that we are the Empire Washington Moors, then we are saying that we are the Moorish Empire. Get it? Got it. Their old world order was a benevolent society where they used sacred geom um, geometrical designs, pipe organs, and cacaoian bells to help and to heal and to achieve higher consciousness. All of the art um, architecture and technology we know of today was developed by the Tatars. Yeah, by the Mormors. <laughs> the 18th and the 19th century were finally final book burning and removal from historical knowledge of this great once civilization that flourished up until just 100 years ago. Yeah, 1914. It was called the Ultimate Empire. The Ultimate Empire was the Moorish Empire, was the um, Tartarian Empire. All of this was one and the same. He has a revised edition to this book because more information is always coming out. Right, get this book, exposing the expositions, 1851 through 1915. As I just told you, 1914, the Ultimate Empire was still in power. So when you read historically about the Ultimate Empire having to be split up into various pieces and countries that was doing that's what the purpose of World War One was for. Have anyone ever told you that? I believe you did one time, uh uh Baba Lee. Don't you tell nobody <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. It was you. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> so the expositions exposed 2021 is a fully revised and edited version of the 2019 original have we have been lied to during 1850 through 1915 great exposition fairs the great fairs were built worldwide, including Chicago, 1893, Paris, 1900, St. Louis, 1904, San Francisco, 1915. These giant 7 to 1,200-acre expos were built in impossible time of at least two years. They following the end of the event, they were demolished destroyed, and threw into landfills. Most of these fairs was built to resemble ancient Rome. And I now feel that there was no accidents. But were the building of these world expositions, now new ones being built and old ones being restored, part of the civilization that was co with or coexistence, excuse me, with ancient Rome and Greece. This controversial 198-page book inspects the history of the world expos or expositions between 1851 and 1915 and the strange time frame they were associated with. Okay. Once again, this was Moorish, the European put his spins on the information, and he makes these buildings to be so-called Roman and Greece. But the Roman and Greece tell you that they got their information from the Egyptians, from the Africans. 
And who were the Egyptians? The Egyptians were family members or the priest clan of the Ethiopians or part of the bloodline of the Ethiopians. And who are the Ethiopians? The Ethiopians are the Kushites and the Shemites. In other words, our bloodline. These were the Moors. The Moors came from out of Ethiopia. In fact, in Kenya today, today, you have the Moru or the Meru, as in America. The Meru people exist today in Kenya. Now, we can debate after we get all this information completed if the Meru people went into Kenya from America or if the Meru people are the ones who came across into West Africa and was brought into America. Really, that doesn't matter to me because I understand and understand that the word Meru, M-E-R-U, was also told to us in the definition in Webster Dictionary of 1828. When we look up the definition of American, it says the original meaning was Meru. So we see within the book written by Asa G. Hilliard, historian Asa G. Hilliard, one of our great scholars, Boulay member, and he died in Egypt, and President Barack Obama brought his body back here to the America, back here to the United States, I should say, so that he could be buried. I didn't know Obama did that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. They always come up with a lot of negative things about Obama. But okay then. Yeah. Well, yeah. this was a positive one. This one. <laughs> yeah. Which they don't tell you about. Um, and in the oldest book in the world, as it is called, if I'm not mistaken, the oldest book in the world, um, which is from my ancient Egyptian, um, from hieroglyphics or what is known as the Metro Nature, um, the book tells you that Meru was a symbol of an owl and the mouth of Ra called Ru. So the owl letter is M. That's the translation of the owl is an M. And then R-U. So it become Meru. So the people who are in Kenya who is part of the Meru were once also the ancient Egyptian or the priesthood coming from the Ethiopia into Egypt. Let's say it that way. And they now dwell in Kenya. And they tell you that if you trace the history of the Meru people, they say they just didn't dwell within Egypt at one time. They came from out of the land of Canaan. Hence, these was Israelites. And you'll find that the Meru people was also part of the Bantu people. In which that 60% of our genetics here in the United States, among so-called African-Americans, the Moors, we have Bantu connection. For we have E1B1A and its subclans as our haplogroup. So this is all Moorish. So you can get these books. And it will help to put together the pieces of this puzzle of the last Western Empire that they had to destroy the last vestige of. Why destroy it? Because our civilization was greater than theirs. 
They wanted to build a society based on sucking the last vestige of energy from the people. While our society had free energy, we allowed for the people to be free, literally, not demonic. This is what they have done with their society. They have created psychological, uh, demonic, or psychopathic people, sociopathic people. Yep. What's the name of that book? People. The name of this book is called Exposing the Expos or Expositions, 1851 through 1915. Okay. Revised 2021. Okay. Doc, I also realized the word tar, uh, Tartarian, that's uh, derogatory as well. Where? Is this uh, from Tartarus, which is uh, held in Greek? <laughs> exactly. Right. So we know that that was a name in which that was thrown upon the Moors. Hmm. All right, get this book, One World, One America, Two, Hattarian, Antiquitech, and Lemurian Giants. Who are the Lemurians? Well, we already proven that we were the Lemurians. Mm -hmm. That was us, the Moors, who dwelt on the Hawaiian Islands at one time. But the Hawaiian Islands was once Lemuria. And it still is today as Maui is the capital of <laughs> M-A-U-I or M-U because the A and the I was just vowels in which they threw up in there. What words do you have in which that has three vowels after a continent? M A U I? Why you have three vowels? Hell, you just only thing you needed was the um the O <laughs> the Y. But that was them trying to hide the fact that Maui is Mu, which is the Hawaiian Islands. So they simply made it the capital, M-A-U-I. So here, this is written by James W. Lee. Again, One World, One America, Two, Totarian, um, Antiquitec, and Lemurian Giants. And it says, chapter one, lies, all lies. Carbon dated, busted. We have free energy forever. The great African-American slave trade debunked. Uh-oh, this is a white man debunking the African-American slave trade. The Jesuits just made up and added 1,000 of years to their history. The great African whitewash built with horse and buggy, really? Because this is what they would tell you, that they built all of these fantastic structures and architecture with a horse and buggy? For real. Antarctica was ice-free just a few hundred years ago. No such thing as a black person. They are brown-skinned. Uh-oh. White folks are getting this. The greatest scam of all times, vax to death. Chapter 2. Prehistory, one world. One America before North, Central, and South America. There's only one America. Atlantis, Georgia, and Mortania, Africa, the original Mor America. 
Hold on, 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 hold on. I don't know if you ever remember that skit from the David Chappelle show. But right there. Atlantis, Georgia, and Mortania, Africa, the original Omorica. He just told you the same thing I just told you. Weight of the world, the Atlantis. The Atlas Mountains of North Africa. Depopulation agenda specialized or specialists in Atlanta, Georgia today. To Mary, Florida, or the original Garden of Eden. Four rivers of creation. Mu, M U, is code for Moors. Moors. Uh oh. You'll see that? This is a European right writing on your information. Now, of course, like I said, I revealed this over 15 years ago in my book, The First World Order. He's revealing it to you now. The four root races of man, and Antarctica operations high jump following by Operation Bug Out, Peshamama, or Mother Earth in the Andean culture, Ancient supercontinents, one America and one world Pangea. Mother Earth, sacred chakra centers, one world, one language. How the one Earth broke apart theory, take one. Three, high tech, antiquit tech, before Tesla stole it. I believe I told you all that before. Tesla name was put on it, but we already had this technology. So here, Tartarian, Atlantis, Antiquetech, Dodger, Energy Device, a.k.a. the Tibetan Thunderbolt, the most powerful weapon in the, uni in the universe. The Check this out now. This is what it says. The Rainbow Bridge. Now, y'all might have um, heard of the Rainbow Bridge. If you have studied Thor and Loki or the Norse tales of what place? Asgard. Exactly, of Asgard. New Mexico, a Stargate portal. I mentioned that in the new book of Stargate DNA that I wrote. Harvesting nature's natural resources for, for free energy. Cathedral, not cathedral, or cathedral, not cathedral. El Mundo, the lost world, the one world naval and umbilical cord in Peru and Bolivia. Nazca aqueducts, harvesting, uh, what do you call it, electromagnetic or magnetic electrics through hopper domes, free energy critical red mercury site found, antiquitec solar and lunar calendars, the great antiquitec um, flying machines, free energy cars that ran on air. This is what we had, Joel. Free energy radium. This is what they've been hiding from you of how advanced your civilization was. And we think that we have to pattern our shit after the shit that he has today, which is detrimental. Who wants to patter this shit after a microwave? Radiation. All right. Oh, Lord. Chapter 4, Atlantis, Georgia, Africa. Lost City or Lost Cities. Benemy Islands, Atlantis. Nan Madal, Venice of the Pacific. The Garden of Micronesia. 
Atlas and the Weight of the World Wide World. Chapter 5, Land of Mu and Lemuria. Lemuria was one world America. I'm going to let that sink in right there. Lemurians, the fourth Atlantean root race, when the feminine divine manifested, first people on earth, the ancient Hawaiians. Okay? Astronomy to the early Hawaiians. Atlantis, Israel, Atlantic, excuse me, Atlantis, Israel, and Iran, question mark. Highly spiritual people, the heart of Turtle Island, Four Corners, United States. Chapter 6, Land of Giants and Giant Lands. The great Smithsonian destruction and cover-up of the giant skeletons, which you all know that I've done. Um, videos on that information. Matter of fact, I did a video on it, on this information uh, back in two. Matter of fact, it was 2019, so five years ago. Um, I believe, yeah, I believe it was five years ago. With um, um, Michelle Gibson, she was on the ship with us, and she did a presentation. Chapter 6, Land of the Giants, as we just spoke. So, um, the great Smithsonian destruction cover up of skeletons, giant skeletons, giants USA, giants in Brazil and Peru, California giants, giant trees of life and knowledge. Where well, they told us about the um, Jack and the Beanstalk, that was no lie, that's real. We had gigantic trees in which that was cut down and which that now look like flat top mountains. My mom used to read me that one. Mm-hmm. Golden goose. Oh, yeah. The goose that laid the golden egg. Chapter 7. Mount Shasta, center of the universe. First people of the Moria, Mount Shasta. The crystal city of Telos. Now, Telos is also what's called Chiros. The first inhabitants Mount of the Shasta root. One in California? Yes. First, because at one time, um, California was an island. And this is depicted back in the 1500s, 1400s on the map. If I'm not mistaken, it might be that between the 1300s to the 1500s on the map, it was shown that. Um, California was an island before it crashed into the western part of the United States, as it is now called, or America, to become part of America. But it was once an island. And if it was once an island, then more than likely it was part of um, the large island that we now refer to as the Moria. Okay? Chapter 8, Harvesting. Crystal Earth Energies, the many, many use of crystals, Atlantean fire crystals, crystals of power, Superman, memory crystals, crystals of healing. Chapter 9, the last great world reset. See, this is what they tell you of the last Western world empire, which they already told you about in law. Now we see it in history. Chapter 9, the lost the last great world reset, worldwide mud flood or great cataclysm, the liquefaction, stone castles, mass hidden cities refound in the Amazon using LD, LIDAR, LIDAR. LIDAR. LIDAR, excuse me. There we go. The great Mississippi reset of 1811 through 1812. One giant flood or many. The big spin. Then we have chapter 10. One world in love. The United Nations recognized Native Moors as the original or the, excuse me, the oldest indigenous tribe on earth in 1995. Who you think he's talking about? <laughs> 
you talking about you watch Tom Wars? So I recommend that you get this book because in chapter 10, he starts off talking about the Washita and how the United Nations recognizes it as the oldest indigenous people on earth. And it wasn't in 1995. However, it was in 1993. What's the name of that book, Arlene? One World, One America. One America. Right. One World, One America. Part two. Okay. Who's the author name? I forgot. James W. Lee. Oh, the same? Oh, James? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Now, yeah, get get that book. All right. James W. Lee. Yeah, uh, all right, so we on Chapter 10 of what's in there. So let's continue on. I know I'm taking some time, but... I have to show you what is now being released on your behalf as proof of your heritage and that white people are not lying any longer about who you are. Whitewash of the brown-skinned natives. Finally giving it up. When queens, <laughs> when queens ruled and men defended and provided. Once again, when queens ruled and men defended and provided. Moors originally meant Westerners, not black, Negroes, or colored. Uh-oh. Moorish inventions of many years ago. The great Tartari. So he just identified that the Moors are the Tartarians. Notice that? Because he just told you right here, the whole chapter 10 is about the Washitors, about whitewashing of the brown-skinned natives, the Moors, when queens ruled, matriarchy, and men defended and provided. Moors originally meant Westerners, not black, Negroes, or colored. Moorish inventions of many years ago and the great Tartari. Chapter 11, ancient prophecies about these times right now. Great fifth turning of earth. Rudolf Steiner, Future of Mestate. Appendix 1, Spiritual Beings of Many Physical Reincarnations. We are the many reincarnations of our ancestors returning at this time. Appendix 2, the many secret societies you never heard of before. Get that book. I'm telling you, get the book. Get the ball. Well do, brother. Boom. Now, we show that. Yeah. I got one more to show. Right, this is part one. I told you about part two. And this is how we know that the Tartarians or the Moors is because he breaks it down in the book. This is called One World, One America, Tartarians and Moors. You get it? So we just proved what I postulated just 20 minutes ago is what this says. This is like no history book ever written. A total rewrite of history or his story as we have been told, sold over decades and centuries. I was taught to question everything and be curious. In the questions, we shall find the answers. What if one world was united and connected up until the great weather event of the early 1800s? What if 
you learned all carbon dating was now debunked due to gross inaccuracies. What if the one world American Moors were the other great civilization was the other great civilization too? Let's say that again. What if the one world American Moors were the other great civilization to be whitewashed from history? Hold up, let's say that one more time because this correlates specifically with what we just read in their own law books, right or wrong. What if the one world American Moors, the American Moors, were the other great civilization to be whitewashed from history? What if history now is proven that the one world Ancient Moors were the oldest indigenous people on earth and came from one America. Mm. What if the white giant Tartarians were able to intermingle with the brown-skinned Moors because the one world were all connected only a few hundred years ago because the great before the great mud flood, earthquakes, volcan volcanic um, and common storms, comet storms of the early 1800s destroyed much of them and their culture. What if the first people in the Garden of Eden was actually in the one America and Cairo, Judah, Zion, Lebanon, and many other biblical cities actually originated in one America? So when you just read about Egypt, Cairo in Egypt, what if it was already here? This is what he's postulating. What if those use the term like black, Indian, red, skin, color, Latin American, African American, etc., to hide the native Moors of one brown, copper-colored skin who thrive in one America? Uh-oh. What if one world was so connected to the source they could create free energy at will for everyone? What if California was an island up until the 1800s and could not be conquered until the Great Flood of 1810? In other words, with the Flood of 1810, that's what created the, um, the Andreas Fault Line was the Great Mud Flood, in which that connected the island of California to now we call the United States. You get it? What if the benevolent Queen Khalifa allowed all the people to flourish and be provided for and protected her people from the invading white man with griffins she trained by feeding them white flesh meat. Mm. Damn. Yeah, Khalifa. Was, was, was she a real woman? Yeah. yeah some people try to say she was a myth, but, but no. Oh, no. No, no, you okay. don't have no myth. Yeah, yeah. They wish right. she was a man. Yeah, they wish she was a man. <laughs> what is? Uh huh. What is? Yeah. Well, we're trying to what? wash away our history. Damn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They love doing that now. They 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 got to have it doing that. But the history is back once again. So if you don't have my book, the first world order, if you don't have um the current book, um Planet Genesis, Stargate DNA. And human extraterrestrial origin, and if you don't have James W. Lee's books, then you're slipping. Because these books tell you specifically about our origin on planet Earth and beyond, especially my book, Planet on um, Planetary Genesis. What if 
the Great Salt Lake City of Utah, or the Great Lo Great Salt Lake in Utah, could not be crossed until 1848. Go because it was still a lake until the early 1800s and had to dry out before crossing, thereby um, validating the California an island just over two centuries ago. What if the name Columbus really represented Augustine de Colombo, who discovered plasma-free energy that Tesla would demonstrate later? Why did most of the world civilizations build similar yet unique, magnificent Pyramids, cathedrals, and governmental structures, or government structures. Where did they get the knowledge and ability given it was said to be horse and buggy days? Because this is what they told us. They told us that these magnificent capital buildings and 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 white houses and libraries and post office and castles that exist in the Western Hemisphere was built by horse and buggy. Yeah, all within a 50-year span. Right. How did these world cultures assimilate and communicate with each other to share the same knowledge? That's the question he tells you in the book. See, you have to expand your mind and see with these particular books, your mind will be expanded to beyond just his story. Now it will resonate with your story and why you are the greatest people on the earth, but yet you are the most degraded, most humiliated and despise people on earth today. I think there's something. I think there's really something, man. They know who we are. That's why. <laughs> and they had to spin the narrative that you are the most disgusting, most yeah. hateful, <clears throat> Negro. Man. Of only most other people do, boy. Right, to steal your heritage in one regard, and yet destroyed in another. Where did they get the knowledge and ability given it is was said to be the horse and buggy days? How did the world culture assimilate and communicate with each other to share the same knowledge? Why were in almost Tartarians and more structures aligned with the luminaries in the heavens using sacred geometrical designs. How did the giants of Tatari and Moors live amongst the one world natives? What if you learned the first university was found by Moors were Oxford and other universities that copied later? It now appears that the population of both North and South America was far extended those of Europe and at the same time, Columbus came ashore. Both American continents was largely under cultivation, and most of the Native Americans enjoyed permanent houses and lived in well-organized villages and cities. The second case, the disease brought over from Europe, especially smallpox swept through the Americas in advance of the invaders, and now thought to have killed as many as 95 to 97 percent of the resident natives, estimated to be nearly 100 million natives wiped off the earth by the Roman Catholic Spaniards as the purge of the Moors and discovered United States Incorporation both in the year 1492. Of course, it says 1402, but it's actually 1492. This lends credence to the theory being present that Native one Americans export, um, exported far more of the value than they ever imported.
Okay? So, you have to get your hands on these books. It ain't bad for three books for $84. Exactly. Exactly. You did, you did what I just did, brother. I ordered them too. <laughs> I got them on my line phone. I got on my cell phone and ordered the books. <laughs> That's right. All right, brother. See, we on, we on the same line, brother. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are there any questions concerning anything that we're going over? No, God. Not right now. All right. So this is your proof in which that I have given to you. This is how you are able to now verify all of this information. We have these additional names which we've gone over before. Additional names and empires of the Moors. I would like to take this space to add some other names and empires attributed to Moors in order to help one in their studies to identify when they are reading about Moors as follows. So when you read about the Al-Mahad or Al-Mahadites, or when you read about the Hamado Vadis, or when you read about the Atlanteans, the Aztecs, the Carthaginians, the Etruscans, the Hasidian, the Inca, the Iroquois, the Lemurians, as we already read about, the Moabites, the Omex, the Ottomans, as we already talked about, the Phoenicians, the Powhatan, the Oppressions, um, the um, Sasurians, the Sumerians, the Turks, the British Empire, the Moorish Empire, the Spanish Empire, the French Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, and when we read about the Spanish Empire, the French Empire, and how allegedly the um, Spanish rolled it over to the French, but then we end up with the Spanish and the French land grants, is because it was the one Moorish Empire. Did y'all just get what I just said? Say that again, Aline. The Please. Spanish Empire, the French Empire, the British Empire, the Holy Roman Empire is all Moorish empires. All right. They are all what you said. Moorish empires. So therefore, so we when you read about the Spanish land grants or the French land grants and how the family of the Washington Turnica received these land grants, it was through bloodline because the Empress showed that she was related to the Holy Roman Empire, the French Empire, the Spanish Empire, and the British Empire which happens to be the same bloodline of Prophet Noble Drali, as well as also mine. So I'm just saying that all of this fits into place here with these connections. And the reason why this information comes back around again, and now it is being exposed once again, because you can't hide DNA. In other words, what is inside of you comes out. The ancestor speaks through you. That is what is called intelligence. When you read about the CIA or the NSA or the FBI or the Alphabet Boys, and they tell you that they need intel, what are they talking about? They need information. Great. Right. So when I tell you that you are intel legit, what I'm what am I saying? We are the uh, the right intelligence. We have the right and in, 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 uh, information. 
the information is coming right. uh, from us. Right. The source. Exactly, Brother L. Thank you. You are the source of the information and knowledge. It is in your genes. That's what intelligence means. Intel, I, jet. Information inside of me, I, genes, my genes, my genealogy. Indigenous. All right. Indigenous. Exactly. Mm. So your intelligence comes from your indigenous ship. So this is what I'm talking about. They, they can't hide your DNA. They can't hide your genes. And so when we talk about Morocco, we now understand based on our information, the Spanish colonists, now, who was the Spanish colonists? We just showed you that when they talk, spoke about the Spanish Empire, those was Moors. So the Spanish colonists adopted the native name of America to designate the first settlement of the mainland of the New World. But in those days, the rule of um, orthography was undefined. And in addition to the numerous errors of printing, names were spelt in any way which the writer considered most appropriate, and hence. We have America, but not only written as America, Amaruka, and a miracle, but Maraka or Moraka. There go your Morocco, as I was telling you. So America is Morocco, and this is verified in the book America. In which that proves it right here. In fact, this is the name of America, and this is what is telling you the name of America was is number eight, Morocco. Morocco, which is the word Morica or Morica, or what is also known as what? Morocco or Morocco. Uh, I'm a Morocco. I'm a Morocco. Bingo. You see? So, this is verification. You want even further verification? Let's go to another relative of mine, the cousin of Prophet Nobudrali. We go to CM Bay. When we just told you about United States Title Code 141, that is what he actually tied us back to. If you remember, the name America is derived from Morocco, Al Morocco, and not from the Italian name Amerigo, as in America's Vespuscus. America it was and is part of the dominion of the Moroccan Empire, which is the Ottoman Empire, the Songhai Empire, Ghanaian or Malian Empire. And you don't believe me? See United States Title Code 22, Chapter 2, Section 1. 41. Hold on. Where did we just read that at? That was in the definition, if you remember, of consular court. So 22 United right. States Code, Section 141 to 143, repealed. Why was it repealed? Oh, I know why. Because they destroyed the last Western Empire and naturalized you as more. So therefore, you lost your nationality. That. August 1st, 1956, repealed Section 141 to 143, effective upon the date which the president, what president? Oh, I know what president. We'll get to that in a second. Determined to be appropriate for the relinquishment of jurisdiction of the United States in Morocco. In other words, the United States of America. Remember, Morocco or America is not of the United States. Um, the United States is a banner flag flown. In other words, doing business as, but not as. In other words, it's not it, but it's doing business as 
it. But it's not it. It is de facto. It is not de jure. Jurisdiction of the United States of Morocco was relinquished by monumentum of President Eisenhower. Dwight Eisenhower dated September 15, 1956. Notice was given to Morocco on October the 6th, 1956, and all pending cases were disposed of by 1960. See Bulletin of the State Department, Volume 35, 909, page 844, Section 141, RS 4083, 4125, 4126, 4127, Act June 14th, 1878, Chapter 193, 20 state um, status or 131 related to judicial authority generally of ministers and consuls of the United States in China. So that means that the Moroccan Empire existed in China, Siam, Turkey, Morocco, Muscat, Abyssinia. What is Abyssinia? Oh, that's Ethiopia, y'all. Persia and territories formerly part of the Ottoman Empire, including Egypt. So it wasn't just the Americas. We talking about China. The largest population on the planet Earth is what? China. Oh, okay, okay. I just wanted to um, see if everybody know that. <laughs> but we we connected, we, we tied to China, uh, right. Africa, Europe. I mean, right. not just. Uh, not, now I don't know what cry one of us mean when he said we said we're not just Africans. All right. right. Consequently, the Kingdom of Morocco in East Africa, north western part, was not allowed to fly the Moorish flag until 1956. Why? Because they had to make us relinquish our rights as separate from them. And how did they do that? 1956 correlated to the time of 1955, right after Martin Luther the King came out with, We shall overcome. No, we can leave that shit behind, brother. <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> So Martin Luther the King in 1955, going into the following year, 1956, had us to relinquish our rights as who we were as the Americans to become United States citizens or to give the privilege of United States citizens because we never were United States citizens. We can't be based on the Dred Scott case decision and the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. They gave the illusion. See, you get the illusion, we believe it. Why? Because they destroyed the information. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is what they did. Yes, this this is what they did, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. As Pastor Ray Hagen said. <laughs> so, this is what I was talking about. Webster New Universal Underbridge Dictionary, 1937 edition, states American, an Aboriginal, one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of the European settlers. The following is the original application of the name Meru. 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 So who are the Meru? Well, you get the book, the wonderful Ethiopians of right, all the Moors, exactly. The wonderful Ethiopians of ancient Kushite Empire tells you in Chaldean inscription the vernacular the vernacular, excuse me, name of Ethiopia was Meru. Do you all see that? So this is why I told you that the Moors was Abyssinians, and Abyssinia is Ethiopia. 
And this explains on why when I test your DNA, you have Ethiopian in you. But yet, they claim that you came from West Africa. Then how the hell you get Ethiopian in you? Because that's East Africa, nigga. But we got all of you from West Africa 400 years ago. This is the trick. But this is why you need this book, Wonderful Ethiopians of the Ancient Kushite Empire. Because she just, Drusilla Houston just told you that in Chaldean, who came from Chaldean? That was Abraham. The Abraham, the father of all monotheistic belief systems, Judaism, Christianity. Islam and the inscription, the vernacular name of Ethiopia was Maru. So Ethiopia was actually called Maru. This is why Anthony Badrali said, Don't call you Ethiopians because that was a vernacular name. You are Maru, Moors. You get it? That's who you are. You are the Got aboriginal, or the copper colored, colored natives found on American continents by the Europeans. The original application of the name. What's the original application of the name? It's Maru. This is what they know. This is what they can't show. But now we can prove. Here it is, the teachings of Patahotep, the oldest book in the world I was telling you about. Here is the owl and the mouth of Ra, which means to speak things into existence, Ru. Meru, here it is, means the guardian. You are the guardians. You are the actual guardians of the galaxy. Not no damn cartoonish Marvel uh, movie. You actually are the guardians of the of the galaxy. And this is how we know that the Muru, the Moors, were the Tartarians, because look at the symbol. The same symbol of the Tartarian Empire is an owl, which happens to be the same as that of the Moors. There it is. Y'all see this? Yeah, <clears throat> Yes. All right. All right. And this is why they put it on the $1 bill in the upper right-hand corner. Because they know who you are. But would you see the owl if it was not shown to you? There's the owl. Barely see it. Right above the dollar to the left, and the owl represents the truth. So this is the truth of the matter. This was Moorish. This was the Moorish Empire. You are on the $1 bill of Washington, which his name was not even Washington. We know that the name is Washita. He was Wessington, not Washington, which was a name stolen to transform the Washington or the Washita people into Washington and then giving the first president the name who we know was not the first president. <laughs> so these are the tricks. And we have to expose these tricks. We have no choice. This is who we are. This is in our DNA. And like the song goes, ain't no stopping us now. 
We all move. We got it. Yeah. Ain't no stopping us now. So here, this is verified. 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro by Jay Rogers. This is him. He says, the more ancient name for the so-called black people are the Hesu or Nubian, Ethiopians. And what? More. From where? Ancient Egypt. From where? Ancient Egypt. From where? Ancient Egypt. From where? You want more proof? Here it is. What's the dictionary in the Saurus, United States and World Atlas? So in the United States World Atlas, why do they put in parentheses Meru or Mur as the word more? And then they tell you that the Moors conquered Spain, but then have you thinking at the same time that the Spanish Empire was other than Moorish? How is that possible? You tell me Moors conquered Spain and ruled for 800 years, and if Negroes get into any place for 800 years, them going to be Negroes. Best believe that. So they're going to be Negroes or more. <laughs> That's the only thing they can be. <laughs> That's one thing Negroes are uh... going to do. They're going to sex. <laughs> And they don't know if and Negro and Black is the same thing. They don't want to be called Negro, though. <laughs> right. In, in 800 years? Good God Almighty. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. Get this book, Mirror to More, Came In Until Now by Cosmo L. It happens that the overseer governor chiefs seem to be common usage to the title mayor. This is um, prefixed to others in order to identify the status in the head of a particular industry or post. If we take notice, mayor, which you remember, mayor is Meru, which is America, one and the same, showing you that America was, means the place of the Moors, the land of the Moors. That's what America means, the land of the Moors. Once again, the word America means the land of the Moors, not the Native Americans. Got, got that word Amer Mer in, in America. Okay, right. That's what you're talking about now. Yep. Oh, yeah. Cause... Oh, yeah. You got it, Brother L. Exactly. Uh oh. <laughs> land of the Moors. Right. Okay. The word America means the land of the Moors, y'all. Okay? Got you. So it don't mean land of the... Native American. So all these Negroes popping this Native American shit when the word America means the land of the Moors or out of order and when the last Western Empire was that of the Moors verified in their own historical analogies, their own history books and by their own authors and even in their own law books as we've already shown you, showed you. Mostly when referring to governing live people, we have the word mere referred to posts such as captain, governor, administrator. Mostly when referring to governing live people. However, when governing property, then translation uses overseer, keeper, steward, etc. Perhaps this is why the esteemed author George 
G. James referred to Moors as the custodians, hence the guardians of the comedic knowledge or culture. In, 18, um, in the 800 century AD, the Moors, native of Mauritania in North Africa, invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture, which they had preserved knowledge in the ancient days, were centralized. Here it is, Moro, Maru, or synonymous, uh, synonym, excuse me, keeping in mind that the vowel is A-E-I-O-U-Y, or interchangeable, thus more, mir, or synonymous as well, or synonyms as well, emphasizing that the word Merican, Morican, the letter O is interchangeable with E as American or Amorican reference Barry W. Encyclopedia Hereditica Morica being a derivative of more as the word also Moreno or Morena thus American or Morican or Al Moroccan or consistent Plus, what they never told you in history class by Indo Kemet Kush, the, this book he tells you the first Moors were black. And here's the book that was just made mention of by Barry Moors, the race, as it occurs in European um, heritage, always means Negro. So, if someone is spoken of, Europeans are spoken of as having um, Negro blood, if they are referred to as being Moors, that means that they have Negro blood. Or what we appear or what we believe to be Europeans, actually they're not, they're just simply passing. If they have enough Moorish blood in them, then they're Negroes. This is where the one drop blood comes in at that we've always heard growing up. So, Adjira say that to the Greeks, Romans, and the Gauls, the Moors were known as the black people. Okay, now, this is important because we made mention of the fact that the Tartarians, the Moors, uh, fashioned their cities after the Greeks and the Romans, but yet here it is that the Greeks and the Romans are the ones who made mention of the Moors i.e. the Tartarians as black people. <laughs> this is Jay Rogers' book, Nature Knows No Color Line. The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor William states, now again, just who were the Moors? The answer is very easy. The original Moors, like the original Ethio um, Egyptians, were black Africans. In amalgamation, became more and more widespread, only Berbers, Arabs, and Colors, and the Moroccan territory was called Moors, while the darkest and the black-skinned Africans were called Black or Moors. Eventually, a Moor was dropped, not black, because they still call us black today, it was dropped from the Black or Moor. And we became the term black. In North Africa and Morocco in particular, all Arabs, Muslim Arabs, Mixed breeds and Berbers are readily regarded as Moors. The African blacks haven't, haven't had even this name taken from them. Must contend for recognition as Moors. So here it is, Chancellor Williams is telling you that we must contend for recognition as Moors. Well, how did we do that? How did we do that? We did that through our nationality, through our documentation, our affidavit of truth, our affidavit of facts. This is how we contend for recognition as morals. We put that shit on the public record. See, they were saying it in their books, but weren't doing it. We did it. We took the shit one step further. We took what John Henry Clark said one step further when he said that we answer the foolish names such as black, 
colored Negro. Black might tell you how you look, but it don't tell you who you are. There's nothing wrong with that. However, it's not a nationality. And this is what John Henry Clark said. He said, your nationality must instantaneously tell you back the land, culture, and history. We did that. We did that through our affidavits. We did that through our affidavits, through stating that we were Moors. Washington Moors. We did that through our affidavits and put it on the public record. We did that. We contended for recognition as Moors. We did that. We put it in our documentation. So we did what John Henry Clark told us to do. We did what Chancellor Williams told us to do. What they didn't get a chance to do, we fulfilled that promise, that prophecy. We are the prophecy guardians. We are the keepers of those prophecies. Do you understand the responsibility that you just did by declaring your nationality? You did that which they, they could not do, which they did not and had not done. But you fulfilled their wishes. Yes, we did, didn't we, brother? Yeah. And if Moors in America don't exist, then why is it on the CDC, the Center of Disease Control website? With Moors is the code 667. If Moors don't exist, then why is it on the Massachusetts Bay Corporation or Corp website? 1237-7 if Moors don't exist. If the Moors are not recognized by the United States, then why in the goddamn hell are you Moors listed? on their documents, on their forms throughout the various states and in the federal race classification codes. See, they playing games. Somebody playing games with you all. At least they were. They can't do it now. Because you don't put your shit on the public racket. Said the Washington alone will show you. We are the oldest indigenous group on, on earth, and, uh, yeah. in the Americas. You know, <laughs> what, what what the hell? What proof do you need? What what other proof do you need? Okay. No. So we get the heritage restored. This is by Julius Rose and Dr. Layla Africa. Julia Rose is a good friend of mine on Facebook, and Dr. Layla Africa. Um, told me before he passed that he was very proud of me for what I was doing, getting this information out to the people. This is what he beautiful. told me. That's beautiful, brother. So many historians allege that the honor and credit went to Americo Vespusky, an explorer or explorator, as we refer to him as. Cologne did not discover anything, nor did Americo Vespusky, nor did they Europeans name it. The word America was developed from the Metronetra name Maru. So here's the book telling you the exact same thing I just told you, written years before I told you. <laughs> In other words, before I was able to formulate and put all this information together. This book already told us this by Julius Rose. And if you're not friends with him on Facebook, I suggest that you become friends with him. The word America was developed from the Metronetra name Maru, which means leader, chief, ruler, etc. This is why they say that the president is the leader of the free world. But he's the United States. He's not an American president, so that is a de facto term for him. He's not the real leader. The word America is how the Greeks called Maru. You see that? So we now know that America and Maru are one and the same. We now know that Moor and America are what? 
one and the same. Here it is. M E R U, when you put U on the end, it means plural. M E R is singular. Just like M O O R is singular. When you put the S on it, just like the U and Miru, it becomes plural. Everybody understand? So right here, the word of America was developed from the metronetic name Maru, which means leader, chief, ruler, etc. The word of America is how the Greeks called Maru, was pronounced it as a Maru coast, a Maru coast from the South American Indians, i.e. Tupac Amaru. The word America bears no resemblance whatsoever to America Vespuscus. This name is also borrowed by the Arabic um, Arabic language and is called Amir, meaning ruler, chief, governor, prince, etc. The European latest corruption of the word Meru reads Moro, as in Monroe, Louisiana, which the Empress said as the mayor of. If Cologne, Columbus discovered America, then why does Vespucci enjoys the credit and honor of having it named after him? The word Meru or Meri or Miro equals chief, director, overseer. And this correlates again with the fact of guardian. When we go back and we look here in the book known as the teachers of Patajo chapter, the oldest book in the world, that mirror, singular, means guardian. So that means if you put the U on it, that means guardians. So the word Ru, which is right there, the mouth of Ra, that um, oval um, shape structure there next to the owl, means actually it's plural. It's supposed to be a U at the end of that word. That would become Meru, which means the guardians. So once again, just prove that you are the guardians. You are not just the guardians, but you also are the emirs, you're the rulers, you're the chiefs, you're the governors, you're the prince and princesses, you're the chiefs, overseers, I should say, directors. That's who you are by nature. Searching for nationality. And once we found our nationality and serve that nationality, we do for ourselves what needs to be done. All the groups in this country understands that they got a nationality. Because you answer to such stupid words such as Negro and black and colored and black, excuse me, Negro colored in black, you have no nationality. Negro is not a nationality. Some Portuguese, Spaniard, made a name out of it. Colored is not a nationality. They tell you how you look, but it don't tell you who you are. The name of a people must instantaneously back to land, history, and culture. And any time that you call a people any time that you any time that you fail to relate a people back to land, history, and culture, then you have denationalized them. That's what I say. Okay? So, this is what is told to us. So, when we went to land, in the most general sense, comprehends any ground, soil, or earth whatsoever as metal, pastures, woods, and moors. So, the S is put on here. So, now it is made plural that we as moors, i.e., former Negroes, former blacks, former African Americans, we have instantaneously tied ourselves back to land. 
as you see here, because land and moors are synonymous. They are one and the same. I can take the word moors and replace it with land, and it will still mean the same thing. And since we was talking about the architecture, what does it say? The word land includes not only the soil, but anything attached to it. So when they destroyed our architecture, they were destroying the moors. When I showed you earlier about the architecture in which that we once had in the, before the um, before the 1800s, the magnificent buildings, which now has been co-opted to become post office offices throughout the country, to become um, destroyed castles or castles of European influence, or buildings of libraries, magnificent libraries, courthouses, capital buildings. All of these things was built by us, the Moors, the Tartarians that they refer to us as. Okay, so this is what we was showing and proving. Show and prove, God, show and prove. But that's what we did. We showed and proved. So here it is. The word Meru is also spelled more, M-A-U-R, or M-U-U-R, or M-O-O-R, or M-O-E-R. And they are known as the Kishites. The Kishites was also called the Meru, M-E-R-O-E. The Cyclopedia of Biblical Literature. There is every reason to conclude that the separate colonies of priestcraft spread it from Meru, M-E-R-O-E, into Egypt. But who are the Abyssinians? I showed you earlier those were the Moors. The Abyssinians are also the Ethiopians. I showed you earlier those are the Moors. So here it is. Where is Meru at? Meru was the capital of Ethiopia at one time, y'all. And the primeval monuments in Ethiopia strongly confirmed the native traditions reported by Theodorus um, Cecilis that the worship of Zeus is Amun, Amun Ra, originated in Moro. Also, the worship of Osiris, which is Osar or Saru. This would render highly possible the opinion that um, commence or commerce. Excuse me, science and art descended into Egypt from the Upper Nile, and others from Ethiopia, from Abyssinia, Abyssinia, from the Moors, and therefore that's the reason why the Moors were the custodians or the guardians of the Egyptian or Kemetic or Tamerian culture, because they are the ones who establish the culture. Herodotus is called the Ethiopian's wise men occupying the Upper Nile. Men of long life, whose manners and customs pertain to the golden age, those virtuous mortals whose feasts and banquets are honored by Jupiter himself. So here it is, the Romans having to acknowledge the origin of their God is Amun or Amen, as in Amen Ra, the same Amen that you say to end of your prayers as a good Christian Muslim. Right. Jew, Hebrew, Israelite, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In Greek times, the Egyptians this um this depicted Ethiopia, Kushite as the ideal state. The Puranas, the ancient historical books of India, speaks of the civilization of the Ethiopia as being older than that of Egypt. According to the concept of the gods and the traditions, faith in the Maru people of Kenya, this is what I was telling you before, that the Maru people still live in Kenya to this day. You can say that they came from out of um, Kenya, which is actually um, at one time was part of Ethiopia, and they came from out of there and went into America, or that they were Maru, named America, and went into Africa. It doesn't matter to me. Could be talking about millions, hundreds and thousands and possibly even millions of years ago. But we know at least thousands of years ago that this took place. So here, um, Amariti um, Gatari 
states Meru is located in the eastern part of the Mount Kenya. The work begins with the literature review and field based on oral traditions, which indicates that the Meru people came from northern Africa, moved to Canaan. Listen to this. Moved to Canaan. What is Canaan? Canaan is Israel. So they was in Israel before the fake Jews, before the Palestinians. They was there, the Maru people. And you have that same heritage day because, once again, Maru is the name of the guardians, and these guardians spread their culture throughout the world, in particular in America, which was named after the guardians, named after the Maru people. Amaruka, Maru, south of Egypt, Maru, Arisha, Mombasa, finally through Tana River to their present land. The Meru or Amaru or Amaru or Amaru or Amaru people also claim that they came along with all the Bantu-speaking communities, eastern, southern, and central Africa. As I told you that the Maru are Bantu people. That means they have E1B1A, just like you do. This is your heritage. The Maru people was also called the Nakas. The god of the Maru people is called Meru Nagu. That same god, Meru, or Nagai become Nagas, which means the king of kings, the lords of lords, is founded in the Americas too. The Maru people are called the Nagas. Nagas. Various Sanskrit books mention the name of the old Kushite kings that was worshipped in India and who was adopted and changed to suit the fancies of the later people of Greece and Rome. The Hindu Karanash speak of the Kushites going to India before they went to Egypt, proving Hindu civilization co-evolved with that of the Chaldean and the country of the Nile. These ancient records, uh, record, excuse me, these ancients record that the Egyptians were a colony drawn from the Kusha um, Duwapa um, and that the Pali, another colony that made the Phoenicians follow them from the land of Kush. In the primitive days, the central seat of Ethiopia was not the Maru of our day, which is very ancient, but a kingdom that preceded it by many ages. They were called Maru. The nomad spoke of the first men of the ancient world as the men of Maru. Sanskrit writers called Indra, chief god of the Hindu, king of Maru. He was defined and became the chief representative of the supreme being. Thus was primitive India settled by colonists from Ethiopia, the Tamil, or the followers of Atum Ray. Early writers say that there were very little differences in the color of features of the people of the two continents or two countries. In other words, there was no difference between Ethiopian and that of the Indian in India. They look the same. Ancient traditions hold of the deeds of Diva Nahusha, another sovereign of Maru, who extended his empire over three worlds. Let's say that again. Ancient traditions hold of the deeds of Diva Nahusha, another sovereign of Maru, who extended his empire over three worlds. What was the three worlds? You're talking about Asia, where India is located. You're talking about Africa. You're talking about America. Those were the three worlds. All right? I'm out. Peace, y'all. Peace. Yeah, I tell you, watch the each. I'll tell you, watch the toys, Masuami. I'll tell you, watch the toys.